Hello, Captains. This is the Doctor, and welcome back to some Star Trek Online news. So it's been a little bit of time since I have recorded a video. It's been about a week with no videos. I apologize for that. I've been very, very, very busy, but I'm about to get right back into making a whole lot of Star Trek Online videos, so be prepared for that. I apologize, but we're getting right back into it. Okay, so... This video probably won't be very long. I don't have a whole lot to talk about here, but I just wanted to post some Star Trek Online news, which I was just reading about on the main webpage. So here I am, Star Trek Online news webpage, and here's the big one. This is the biggie, folks. Victory is Life, our fourth expansion, coming June of 2018. So we've been hearing rumors about this expansion, supposedly, that was coming this year. Well, you are all right, and I guess the rumors are all true. There was a new expansion in the works, and this is it. And it's coming this year, this summer, which is right around the corner. We're almost in April now, so just a couple of months away here from this, which I'm actually a little concerned about on the timing of this because this is supposed to be a new playable faction and well you guys know what they've done in the past with other playable factions kind of releasing these semi half factions half expansions that don't really feel like it's a lot of content or at least enough for a playable faction you know there's a lot of controversy over uh, the Romulan one which was the very first faction expansion that they released and that one didn't seem big enough. It didn't seem like a full expansion. And then they did, I think, the worst of them all, which was the original series expansion, um, Playable Faction, which really, you're still a Federation character. You just play a few original series missions, and then you're back to the future and in Starfleet, and it's just a regular Federation playthrough after that. And so we'll have to see what this one is like. So I've got my, my fears and doubts. Um, I think that in order to build a big faction, you have to, you know, spend a lot of time and resources to do that. And they've never quite lived up to that full Starfleet Federation faction level. None of them, even the Klingon one. It, it's, it's like almost there, but not quite. Okay, so anyway, let's just read about this. You know, it's all going to come out in the wash. We'll find out what happens. It'll be released and then people will either like it or, or they'll hate it. So let's see what happens here. But let's read about this first. Um, first of all, you were all right. It's DS9. Uh, they're doing a total DS9 thing here. So yeah, that's happening. Gamma Quadrant, here we come. Star Trek Online is incredibly proud to announce our fourth major expansion, Victory is Life. Paying homage to fan favorite Star Trek Deep Space Nine, this brand new expansion will bring captains to the Gamma Quadrant and beyond in a new story kicked off by the invasion of the mysterious Herc. You'll, you'll be able to play as a brand new faction, the Jim Hadar. Experience six new episodes in the Star Trek Online story. Okay, see, that gives me a little pause. I, I've got to say, I mean, I know you guys don't like me ranting sometimes, but... Six new episodes in the Star Trek Online story. Is that all we're going to get? Is this faction only six episodes long? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's what it says. Something like that. And interact with ten of the original cast members from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. We're so excited to announce four of those actors for you today. With more coming in the next few weeks. Now, I have not seen this video yet. Uh, I will watch it off camera. I'm not going to play it here for copyright reasons, but... Watch it on your own, and um, I'm going to watch it myself. At the end of the episode, Skeela and Charybdis, uh, which first introduced players to the Herc threat, players were reunited with famed DS9 Chief of Security Odo, as played by Rene, and I have never been able to pronounce his last name, and I'm not even going to try, but we all know him as Odo. Rene is the first Star Trek Deep Space Nine actor who will be joining us for Victory is Life. When last we saw Odo, he had returned to the Great Link, but the threat of the Herc returns him to our space. What is so dire that it could inspire him to return, you'll find out later this summer. So we did see him at the end of that mission. Now it looked like they had cut audio from like a previous 
episode of DS9 instead of having him voice act that. But it is apparent now that they actually did get the actor in to voice uh, new stuff. So that's going to be awesome because I love him. He's got a great voice. He's a great character. I loved him in DS9. So it's good to have him in the game. It just, you know, brings more credibility to the game to have these original actors voicing this stuff. It wouldn't be the same to have Odo without his greatest nemesis and foil, which is why it's wonderful that Armin Shimmerman. Okay, now this guy, a voice you cannot deny. I love his voice. It's going to be great having him in game. He's returning to the role of everyone's favorite Ferengi bartender, Quark. This is going to be great. Quark stayed on Deep Space Nine at the end of the show, but it's been decades since then in the timeline of Star Trek Online. We will find out just what new schemes he's been up to and how they might affect the galaxy. I'm so looking forward to having Quark, Quark and Odo. I mean, come on, that's DS9 right there. After taking command of the station at the end of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Commander Kira Norris went on a spiritual journey that ended with her as the Kai of the Bajoran people. But with Odo returning to this quadrant, and a visitor will bring Kira to life once again, bringing one of the most beloved characters in Star Trek uh, history to life in Star Trek Online. So here we are, we're getting Kira back. Now, I don't know, the face is a little off to me. Um, I can see Kira in that face, but I think it's a little long. That's just uh, looking at that graphic there, just uh, the first thing that kind of caught my eye. But there's one of the orbs, and I didn't know that she went off to become Kai. Interesting. I guess that's where she was headed i don't know i mean i never really saw her as going down that path of like kindness but i guess that's where she went and finally the return of a familiar face jg herzl has spent the last year guiding players in star trek online as a long thought dead klingon general martok now he will lead the forces of the combined federation klingon and romulan alliance into battle against the klingon's oldest and greatest enemy the fearsome herc Adventure once again with the legendary Klingon General when Victory of Life is released in June of 2018 on PC and later this year on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. So par for, par for course, Xbox One and PlayStation 4 players, I'm sorry, Cryptic has put you last. PC first, and you guys will come later, who knows when. <laughs> hey, that's not me, that's them. But it'll be on PC first, apparently. In addition to these new cast members and features... Victory is life will raise the Star Trek online level cap. Ooh, to 65. Now this I didn't know, and I didn't hadn't read this yet. Wow, 65. So we're getting a level cap increase. As everybody knows right now, it's 60. So five more levels. Now that's not a lot. But that means I'm now going to have to go back to all my characters I've created and um, level them up higher. Okay, I do like the fact we're getting a level increase. Because that always enhances a game when you get a level increase, I feel. Because it starts to feel old. You know, you use, you're at a certain level for such a long period of time. You yearn for more highness. You know, you want to go higher. Make me go higher. So it's good that we're getting a level increase. I do, however, feel 65 is a bit low. I think it should be 70. The last uh, increase they did was 10. They went from 50 to 60. So I would like to see another 10 increase. I think we should go up to 70. I think five is, for an expansion, five is a little low. Since they're calling this the fourth expansion, and expansions are typically considered big updates to the game, I feel it should be 70. But I guess it doesn't matter how I feel, does it? Anyway, at least we're getting something. So five new levels, up to 65. And it'll introduce a new queue. Of course, they're going to have new cues. They have to. It's not like we don't have enough already that people don't even play anymore. But hey, let's introduce more of them. Why not? Let's throw more at people. That's all, that's all they do is just keep throwing cues at people. Throw a cue. Here's a cue. Have a cue. You have a cue. You, everybody have a cue. A new progression systems. I don't know what that means. New progression systems. Sounds multiple. And we'll add a sector battle zone. Oh, great. Another battle zone that nobody will, will play after a while. See, the problem with all this is that people play these things, and they play them when they're new, and then they nobody plays them anymore. And you try to get into an old queue, like you want to go get some, you know, marks or whatever you need in an old queue or whatever. Nobody's playing them, and you can't, you can't get into those things anymore. There's too many of them. 
a new gameplay feature that takes players into a war between the stars to save the Gamma Quadrant. A new gameplay feature. Well, so maybe it sounds almost like a red alert, but not quite. A new gameplay feature that takes players into a war. Yeah, I'm not sure what that means or how that's going to work, but interested to find out. Again, is it just something that people are going to do when it's new and then forget about it later? I'm, I don't know. We'll have more information on all these features very soon, and we can't wait for you to experience them. Victory is life. I like the title, Victory is Life. It's very fitting, very, very fitting. I also like the fact that the Herc are from the Gamma Quadrant. Um, we haven't really heard a lot about the Herc in the actual TV series, but apparently they were very, very devastating to the Klingons ages ago, but the Klingons did beat them back. And I like the idea that they're expanding on the Herc by saying that they are from the Gamma Quadrant. And so that opens up the whole DS9 Gamma Quadrant stuff as well. It's a, a catalyst to get in there and do Gamma Quadrant stuff. And I would like to know more about the Gamma Quadrant. I don't think we know enough about it. All we know is that the Dominion are there. You got the Founders and, you know, a couple of planets they visited in the show. But we really don't know a ton about the Gamma Quadrant, I feel. I feel there's a lot more there to explore. So I like the fact that the Herc are from there. That should be interesting. And it sounds like the Founders know about the Herc. I guess that would make sense. The Dominion would have probably encountered the Herc at some point. I mean, that would be a big thing. Because the Dominion were very big in the Gamma Quadrant. They were big time. So that's interesting. I like the story elements. The story elements, A plus to me. Pulling all this together, making connections. I like that. That good. Now, this playable faction, the Jim Hadar. How is that going to go? First of all, if you guys remember from DS9, there's two types of Jim Hadar. You got the Jim Hadar from the Milky Way, not the book, we're all from the Milky Way. You got the Jim Hadar from the Alpha Quadrant or Beta Quadrant, whatever quadrant they were in. Uh, and then you got the Gamma Quadrant ones. The Gamma Quadrant ones were the original ones that the founders created. You know, they created the Vorta and then they created the Jim Hadar. Um, those are from the Gamma Quadrant. They are a little different from the ones created in the Alpha Quadrant. The ones in the Alpha Quadrant were maybe a little weaker, a little more compassionate, a little more emotional, so to say, than uh, they were all, of course, reliant on Catcher Cell White, but they had conflicts between the Gamma-born Jim Hadar and the Alpha-born Jim Hadar. So the question for the faction I have is which Jim Hadar are you going to be? <laughs> are you going to be born in the Alpha Quadrant? Or are you going to be born in the Gamma Quadrant? You know, where, where do you start? Which which Jim Hadar are you? Um, and second, how is that even going to work? I mean, it's not like you're going to be part of the Federation. Because no Jim Hadar are. I don't think you would be part of the uh, Romulan faction. I don't think you would be part of the Klingon faction. Maybe Klingons. Maybe. There is no Cardassian faction. It clearly says Jim Hadar faction, right? Because I'm not reading this wrong. It's not Cardassian faction. It is Jim Hadar. A new faction, the Jim Hadar. Yeah. See, a lot of people were thinking it was going to be a Cardassian faction. You, and then I could see the Jim Hadar in a Cardassian faction. But this is not a Cardassian faction. You're not going to be role playing as a Cardassian. You're going to be a Jim Hadar. Playing as a Jim Hadar. A faction, a whole faction as a Jim Hadar? Where's your home planet? Where's your starting? Where's your starting place? You know, are you going to, are all of your missions going to be in the Gamma Quadrant until you come over to the Alpha Quadrant? Or do you do all Alpha Quadrant missions? And then do you have to join? Now, here's the big question. Will you have to make an alliance with somebody to join them, like the Romulans? Because a lot of people think of the Romulan faction as a half faction, specifically because of the reason that you have to make an alliance with the KDF or Starfleet. And that's not the case with Starfleet or KDF. With Starfleet Federation, you are that faction from start to finish. From KDF, you are KDF from start to finish. But with Romulan, you have to make an alliance with either Starfleet or KDF. And that decides what ships you get, which, which faction ships you get, and uh, the missions that you play and that sort of thing. So that is like a half faction because you get to play as Romulans for uh, you know a half 
half a time, and then you have to join Starfleet, and either you are now in, you know, Federation faction, basically, or KDF faction, just playing as a Romulan. But now, what's the Jim Hadar going to be? Is it going to be the same way? Are you going to have to align with the rot with the Romulan, <laughs> which wouldn't work because they have to align with KDF or Fed? So, do you have to align with KDF and Fed on the Jim Hadar as well? How's that going to work? How would that even come together? We haven't seen Jim Hadar anywhere in the Federation or KDF at all. So I don't know how a Jim Hadar faction is going to work. I'm extremely interested to find out. But I don't. I can't imagine it in my head how they're going to make that happen. Now, the next question I have about all of that is, obviously, are there going to be enough missions for it? Is it going to be a full faction? Is it going to feel full? They, miss, they mention here six new episodes in the Star Trek Online story. Maybe that's outside of this faction. Maybe that's separate to this faction. Or maybe that is just the faction. I, I don't know. But I know if you don't have enough missions to make a faction feel full and fun, it's not going to feel like a full faction. It's going to be like the TOS faction where it feel, where you just play like, you know, a six or something, you know, TOS missions. And then all of a sudden you're in the 25th century on the Fed side and you're just playing a Federation character again. All the set with all exactly the same, just yellow instead of blue, <laughs> you know, a yellow transporter effect instead of a blue transporter effect. I mean, that's the only difference really between a TOS faction character and a Federation character. There is no difference. So is that what they're going to do with the Jim Hadar? If so, a lot of people will be disappointed by that. I can tell you right now, because it'll be once again, uh, it's not a full faction. A lot of people will complain. Or have they put in the time and effort and resources to make it a full faction? I don't know. But if they have, that would make me a little upset that they didn't do that to the Romulan faction. One of my favorite factions to play. But it doesn't feel completely full like the Federation or KDF does. Anyway, my question to you guys, and here's the big question to you guys. Do you even care about a Jim Hadar faction? Have you wanted to play as a Jim Hadar? Do you have desires to be a Jim Hadar in the game? I don't know. I've never thought about that. I, I, I'm, I'd probably rather be a Cardassian than a Jim Hadar. To be honest with you, I'd probably rather have a Cardassian faction than a Jim Hadar faction. Hey, you know what? Maybe I'll put a poll. If you guys can check the video, uh, maybe I'll be fancy enough and do this. In the top right corner, I might put a poll in this video as one of those um, YouTube polls you can create and ask the question, you know, would you rather have played as a Cardassian faction or are you go, or do you want to be the Jim Hadar faction? I mean, I don't know. I'd, how... How much wanted was this, I guess, is my question. How much desire was there to have a Jim Hadar faction? I don't know. I don't know if the demand was that high, to be honest with you. At least in my personal opinion. Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe everybody in the world wants to be a Jim Hadar. I don't know. But I don't know. <laughs> I, can't, I could see a Cardassian faction, but I don't understand the Jim Hadar faction. It's not, and it's not just a playable Jim Hadar here. It says a brand new faction, comma, the Jim Hadar. So they, this is a Jim Hadar faction. I'm not reading that wrong, am I? This is a Jim Hadar faction? Okay, because I, I, I don't want to, I'm not reading that wrong there. It's not a Cardassian faction, it's a Jim Hadar. Unless somebody really goofed. <laughs> okay, let's move on, because I could go off on a tangent there, and I think I just did. Um, next, we're getting a Constable secondary specialization. Uh, makes sense. DS9, a new specialization. And they're calling it the Constable after Odo. Um, entirely new secondary specialization. Um, this is actually coming in just a few weeks as part of Season 14.5. So this may not be related to the expansion. But anyway... Um, you can read all about this. I've already read this one. It doesn't sound that exciting to me. I mean, there's a lot to read here and I don't, I really don't want to read all this cause it's very boring, <laughs> but, um, pretty much you're getting a new secondary specialization. So when it comes to the game, you can decide if you want to put your skill points into that or not. I guess when it comes into the game, we'll take a look at it. We'll actually go look at it and I'll do a video about all the new things and stuff. And we'll look at it then. 
But otherwise, you can come to the Star Trek Online webpage and read about it yourself to see what you're going, going to get. And it sounds to me, uh, when you're reading it, it's both space and ground. So whereas previous ones were specifically space or specifically ground, this one is both space and ground. Whereas when you pick one of the... Um, when you select one of the you know things on there and put a point into it, it's going to operate in both space and ground. So it's like a, a, a skill that you're going to gain, but it's both space and ground at the same time. So that's a little different, a little unique anyway. But nothing too big there, just a new secondary specialization. The big news really, victory is life. That's what I wanted to make this video about, that this expansion is coming in June of 2018. Um, so here's my next question after all of that. Do you guys want me to do a playthrough of the Jim Hadar faction when this thing comes out? Now, obviously, I'll be making videos about this. I will go into the game. We'll look at all the new stuff for the expansion. Um, and apparently there's going to be more stuff. So there's going to be more stuff to look at and explore and all that. But beyond all of the other stuff with the expansion, do you guys want me to do a specific Jim Hadar playthrough or run through? Let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. Um, I probably, if I do, it'll be something similar to what I did with the TOS faction. And that will be, I play, I start a character and I will play the new missions up to the point where they get to the repeatable missions that are the same on every faction. Once I get to that point, I would stop recording because there'd be no point to anymore. But I would keep working on the character and just make new videos when I get like new ships. Because I imagine there's going to be a whole new slew of Jim Hadar ships you're going to have to have too, right? So that could be interesting. And of course I will want to test those ships out. But let me know if you want to see that. I'll, I'll probably end up doing it anyway. But um, just more stuff for me to do, I guess. So that's what's happening. That's what's coming in June. So of course I will be covering all of it. I mean, no, have no fear. I'm going to cover everything, any, everything anyway. So, you know, all the other stuff around the expansion. So again, if you want to see all that stuff coming out, um, you know, subscribe to my channel and all that so you can get updates and you know, when those new videos come out, cause there's no telling when I'll be doing them. I'll just do them as I do them, but we've are only a couple of months away from this expansion. So this is not very far away. It's really coming up on us fast. Wow. Wow. Kind of came out of the blue here. I had a, I had that, you know, I was kind of in line with everybody that there's this rumor that they were going to have a new expansion and that's great and all, but I didn't think it would be this soon. I really didn't think it would be this soon. I thought maybe it would be more like a November, October thing, but no, here we go. June. They're ready to do it now. Uh, I just hope that means they spent the proper time on it because you know how buggy things can get in this game if they're not, you know, done very well. And they usually rush stuff out. We are typically getting things rushed out that are buggy. So we'll see what happens. I'm eight years in this game. And while I'm excited for the new content, I mean, you got to love that eight years and still new content coming. I cringe just a little bit at, cause I know how bad it can be too. I know that people's hopes and desires can be smashed and bugs can be all over the place <laughs> and, and stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Let's just put it right there. I'm cautiously optimistic about this, about this one, just based on previous experiences. I was, uh, uh, disappointed with the Romulan one when it came out and it was a half faction and I was more disappointed with the TOS one when it was like not even a half faction but like a quarter faction so what's this one going to be an eighth of a faction are they going to keep going down I hope not well that's my video uh, I know a lot of it was ranty and uh, hopefully not too much doom and gloom but eight years of this game and it has made me cautiously optimistic so Got to be honest with you. That's just how I feel about it right now until we see more stuff. Because I don't really have a lot to go on. But there you go. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.